Welcome to the SAP Cloud Appliance Library, a platform to quickly deploy and use the latest SAP solutions in the cloud. We are excited to announce that SAP Business One is now available on the SAP Cloud Appliance Library for evaluation, demo and development purposes. We will show you how to create an SAP Cal account and how to create and deploy an instance of SAP Business One for your evaluation, demo or development purposes. Some use cases may be to demonstrate SAP Business One to your prospects or highlight some new developments with your customers or even for internal evaluation purposes, for example. To start, you simply navigate to cal.sap.com and then select Log On. If it's the first time that you've logged on, you'll be asked to accept some terms and conditions. Under Solutions, we are presented with a list of all of the solutions available in the SAP Cloud Appliance Library catalogue. We want to search for the SAP Business One 9.2 version for SAP HANA by clicking on the solution. We are presented with an overview of the solution and the installed products available for this instance. For example, Crystal Reports and the SAP HANA Studio. It also presents you with an image of the solution and by using the arrows, you've got a link directly to our YouTube playlist for SAP Business One. There is also a Getting Started Guide. The Getting Started Guide provides you with important information about the scope of the solution environments. So the next step in this process is to create an SAP Cal account, and this will allow us to create an instance. So under Accounts, we're going to select Create Account. And from here, we need to add a number of account details. The name of this account will be employee one and I'm going to create an account for this particular pre-sales consultant. You then need to select your public cloud provider. In this instance we're selecting Amazon Web Services. From here you actually need to add your Amazon Web Services credentials with an access and secret key details of your AWS account. There is a video and documentation which will help you to map your public cloud provider to your SAP Cal account. So let's now test the connection. We can now see here under account users that I'm an approved user for this particular SAP Cloud Appliance Library account. Let's now review the account details that we've created by selecting create we now have one active account. Once your account is created and validated, we're now able to create an instance. So let's go back to our solution. Once you've selected the solution that you want to install, we select Create Instance. By default, the instance that will be created is under Basic Mode. It is strongly recommended that you select Advanced Mode when creating an instance because this actually gives you additional options, such as the ability to have a public static IP address. And this will allow you to reuse the same IP address for the life of your demo environment. So if your instance is suspended and then started again, the IP address will never change. We choose the existing account that we just created, employee one, and then we can move to step two. So first we're going to enter the instance details, such as the name of this instance. We then select the region in which we are closest to. So it's important that you select the region that you are located in for an optimal fast connection. So in this case, I'm going to select AP Southeast. Here then we have the option to select if we want a public static IP address. In step three, we've got the ability to select a size and specific exit points of our virtual machines. So for example, if I wanted to, in the SAP front end, increase the memory size, I'm able to do that from, for example, four gigabytes to eight gigabytes of memory. You also have the ability to define any additional access points. So you can add additional ports in advanced mode for example, you may have browser access and therefore you would want to populate the port details for browser access here. In step four, 
we need to define a solution password. This is a master password which is used for everything, such as the Windows Administrator password, it is used as the B1 Site User password, the Business1 Administration HANA User password, the Root password, etc. So it is important to create and record this password. In advanced mode, you also have the option to schedule a time that your solution instance will be activated. So once my time zone has been selected, I can activate and suspend based on schedule. I may want to start my schedule time at 8 o'clock in the morning and finish at 6, for example. It could be a weekly basis. So in this instance, I would like my instance to run for a week from Monday through to Friday. I then have the option to set a termination date. This termination date will ensure that my instance is stopped at the time that I want it to be terminated by. So for example, if I want to terminate it close to midnight, and then I can also select the date in which I want my instance to be terminated. Now given we have determined or defined a termination date, this gives us a cost estimate up until that particular termination date. So here you can see my cost estimate per hour when it's active and the actual cost right up until termination. So the solution instance will now be activated on December the 13th at 8 o'clock. Once we have defined all of our instance details, we select Create. We then need to create a private key. Now this key file will enable you to connect to Linux, so it is really important that you click on Store so your private key is stored. As you can see here now, the instance is currently being prepared. It will take approximately 90 minutes to prepare the environment. So if you don't want to wait until your scheduled start time to prepare the instance environment, you can select Activate and this will begin to install the instance silently. By triggering Activate, this will ensure it's ready for your scheduled start date. Now we can see that our instance is now active and the deployment is completed. So if we click on the pre-sales instance that we've just created, under IP addresses, we can now see the external IP address for the front end and back end. The back end IP address is really only useful if you want to test back end scenarios on external devices such as a mobile app or a sales app. But once the solution is activated, you can log in to your remote desktop using the external front end IP address and you use the credentials defined during the creation of the instance. So now we're presented with the environment of our instance. And from here, we have the SAP Business One front end client. We have the SAP HANA Studio installed, as well as, for example, Lumira. And we've got the Data Transfer Workbench and other products that are installed as part of the uh, instance environment that we created. We have an import demo databases tool. And this import tool will allow you to choose a preferred localization, for example. So if we selected the tool, and then we've got the option to choose a localization. So for example, Australia or New Zealand. And we also have the option to choose a model language. In this example, we're going to choose UK English. And then simply by selecting import and initialize, when you start business one, you then will have option and the choice to choose that localization that you imported and initiated. 
Often other employees or colleagues of an organisation would also like to share the tenant that currently exists for your company within the SAP Cal environment. And as the administrator of the company's SAP Cal account, I'm able to share the dedicated tenant link to those specific users who would like access to their own instance or access to the existing instance within your tenant environment and grant them access as a user. To do this, I simply send the users the cal.sap.com tenant link. And when they click on that link, they are able to request access to the tenant environment. So once that happens, as an administrator, I can see here now that my colleague has requested access. The status of his user access is pending. And from here, I'm able to approve, reject or delete this request. So in this case, I'm going to improve the request. I also have the ability to set this particular user as an administrator. Administrator can do is they can approve other users to join and become part of the current tenant. And they also have the ability to create new accounts within the actual tenant itself. So once I have approved this user, this particular user would like to create their own instance. So in order for them to create their own instance, we have to create a new SAP Cal account for that particular user. To do that, I'm going to go to accounts. And from here, as you can see, we have uh, one SAP Cal account created under employee one. And here I'm going to create a second account called employee two. Again, selecting Amazon Web Services as my cloud provider and enter my access key details and secret key details. Then we can move on to step two. And from here, we're going to select the user that I've just approved. And I'm going to make this user an owner. And by doing that, the owner is then able to create an instance of their own within their tenant environment and also they have the ability to start and stop and terminate instances as well. So here we have now created two SAP Cal accounts, one under employee one and one under employee two. And now that we've created additional SAP Cal account for employee two, employee two will then have the ability to be able to create their own instance for their own development purposes, for example. It is also worth mentioning that the deployment of an SAP appliance into a public cloud provider account, such as Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure, will incur a charge and that will be billed to your account on an hourly basis. So get your SAP Business One environment today for your evaluation, demo and development purposes for less than $1 an hour. Thank you for your time.